Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Shady Campbell and on this channel we get creative together and it's fun, not scary. And this January, it's cold and miserable and I have the winter blahs just like everyone else in Canada. But I have been trying to see the beauty around me a little bit more. I've moved back to basically where I grew up and there's something about being where I am from after being away for so long that's, I guess it's just got me inspired to see the beauty in the landscape. When I'm driving around, I always think, oh, I wish I could take a quick photo of that because I'd love to paint that. Um, and when I have a chance to stop or if I, Chris is driving and I can take a photo, I've been getting some cute little snaps of just the winter landscape, the farms, the roads. I live in Southern Ontario, uh, so it's quite rural. And, and the snow and it's sort of bleak and everything's gray. Almost some of the scenes look totally colorless almost. And so today I've got a photo that I've sort of had on my phone for a couple weeks and I really want to paint it. And we're just going to keep it really simple. And so come along with me on this journey of <laughs> uh, embracing a bit of winter, embracing that colorless, colorless kind of sad gray landscape, but we're seeing the beauty and it's just a great way to practice our landscape painting as well. So let's just get right into it. So here's my desk set up on this beautiful icy cold winter morning. I'll get a shot of what the yard looks like outside my window. Ooh, it's cold out there. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's about minus 17 today. So we're gonna do a painting, as I said, of a winter scene and try to embrace winter a little. And this is what I'm doing first. I'm using an Etcher sketchbook. It just has hot pressed watercolor paper, 140 pound hot pressed paper. Uh, both sides of these uh, pages are sized for painting on. If you are interested in the Etcher sketchbook, highly recommend. And what I start by simply taking some washi tape and I just mark out my little rectangle that I'm going to paint in. And I use the sides of the page to keep these guys straight. And then it's like pretty easy to make these ones straight if you do that. And I have some gouache here. We are going to use gouache, but you could do this with acrylics, with watercolor. It's totally up to you. You could do this with marker, pencil crayon. It's all about just capturing a scene, you know, take a quick pick when you're out in the car, if something looks beautiful or, or not beautiful. And then, and then try to capture it on the page. So with gouache, I just like to mix on a big old plate. I do have some ceramic palettes, stuff like that, but we're gonna use an old plate today. I've got two glasses of clean water, paper towel for blotting my brush. And I got a pencil and eraser over here. And of course I have the hot pressed paper and then the washi tape to help me create that little um, canvas basically. And then for brushes, I'm probably gonna do most of this with a um, round brush, something like a number six or an eight is what I will reach for. And then I have a number six filbert there as well, which I think is gonna be really handy. Now, let me give you a little peek at the picture I took. I think it's a good one. I was just out on a back road and um, it just struck me as a really beautiful scene. And it was right in the middle of like two weeks of just nothing but cloud. There was something about this scene that I was like, that's really beautiful. And it doesn't matter that the sky is really dull. And so what I will do when I want to capture a photo on the page is I'll either print it and draw a grid or put it onto my iPad and draw a grid. And so that's what it looks like with the grid on it. Okay. And then, you know, the grid does not have to be a perfect system, guys. You can measure. If you are a person who likes to measure, by all means, I don't want to stop you from living the good life but for me I just don't don't measure I just do like a eyeball it so that's about my one third two thirds and we can see right away that the road ends at about the one third the trees that end at about the two thirds and there's really nothing up in the top third except that guy and that little guy and I hate drawing power lines into paintings but the grid really does help with that Okay, so power lines are in, kind of, kind of. I guess I should take them all the way. <laughs> um, and then the next thing I'm going to do, I think is start with that road. So 
My actual horizon is just below the third. There's like this little section of trees in there. And then there's road, road, and then it dips. And there's like mega road. Oh wait, that goes all the way to the edge. See, that's why you need the grid. <laughs> Because it'll really help you with how to capture that perspective when your eye is totally tricking you and telling you it goes right like that. <laughs> See, there's my first line. There's where it actually is. Um, you can kind of override what your brain is doing. Brain bad. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, mine maybe. <laughs> okay. And then we've got this road. I'm just going to you're, you're dark in color. And then we have these trees. Those are going to be trees. There's some more trees that are kind of more in the foreground. There's going to be this kind of perimeter of white all around that road. So I want to kind of capture that. Okay, white, white, making sure there's white there and over here, because that's where that snow is. Right under this third line here, we have a building. So we'll put him in just by drawing a simple rectangle here, a low rectangle. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. And then we'll put that roof in, and you can see the house shape that little house shape that all kids would draw, like two rectangles and the triangle, or two lines and a triangle on top, there. And then this part will be a bit darker than this part over here. We also have some brush. We're keeping everything very messy. We're working towards a bit of abstraction with this one. And the reason we are working towards a bit of abstraction is simply because this is my first time painting this. So I'm not trying to get every last little detail in here. I just want to capture like the main shapes, forms, colors. And if I like the painting, if it, there's something about it that I think is exciting, then I'll work on it a bit more. And then I might try to capture a bit more detail or I might work myself further into, into abstraction, if that makes uh, sense. The idea being that maybe the abstraction is, is what um, makes the piece so interesting and beautiful, or maybe we realize it does actually need a little bit more detail. So over here, we're going to kind of have some dirty snow, and I'm going to mark that just with X's. The trees are all these horizontal lines. Oh my gosh, today, my language. The trees are all these vertical lines. Do, 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 do. The road are these diagonal lines. And we don't want to forget our snow perimeter. <laughs> there we go. And then, of course, we have our farm building or shed, barn, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> we do have some snow in here. I want to make sure to capture that. There is another little building visible back there. I think I should probably make sure to get him. It's those little details, the ones you might be interested in skipping that kind of go towards making the whole scene look, look more real, more believable. And there's like, a, you can see just the line of a driveway or something back there as well. Over here, we are also going to have, I'm going to put those X's again for kind of not even dirty snow, but snow that is barely covering the grass, the ground, the brush. So it's sort of white and brown. And then all that's really left here is the trees and, you know, the sign and the, the telephone poles. Okay, let's start with the phone pole. So it is just off to the side here. Reaches up about halfway through the second third. Oh, wait. <laughs> 
So that tells me that that line is kind of wrong. So this guy goes up to about there, no higher. So that would go like that. And then the other line goes like that, there. And then down the road a bit farther, we can see another pole right there. And they get a bit smaller down this way. Like they're not really going above the tree line. I think that's important. And we lose sight of the wires quite quickly. I might need to move that slightly. I think I just had it a little bit too high up. And I don't want them to be perfectly straight. That is so not necessary. And then I do have quite a large tree in here. So maybe we just do a line with some crosses through it. They're quite scraggly trees. And we wanna capture little details like some of the branches kind of are curving. This guy over here we're just going to make them very messy to give that look of that winter forest. And all this in here is quite dark. Okay, and then, okay, telephone poles. Have we lost you? Pole, pole. Is that a pole or a tree? <laughs> That's a tree. Okay, no. <laughs> I do get a little lost with landscapes sometimes. And then, Right here, we have a, a yellow sign and it's small like that. Okay, so that is our basic setup. Yeah, it's not, it's not perfect, it's far from it, but we've captured the main elements and I'm excited to mix up a little bit of gouache and paint this winter scene. Oh, one thing I forgot, while well, we still can see the grid lines, is the lines on the road. So there they are, there. Okay, let's mix up a little bit of color. Okay, so the colors I'm using are Windsor Green, Indigo White. I have Van Dyke Brown here. Getting dried out a little bit. And then I have um, Naples Yellow, Deep Naples Yellow. So Windsor Green, Indigo, Van Dyke Brown, Naples Yellow, and a bit of white. So you don't need a lot of colors. We're going to kind of stay in that very gray, wintry zone with this one. And I think the first thing I want to do is just capture that really, really dull winter sky. And so with gouache, gouache is a lot like watercolor paint. It is a highly opaque water-based medium. And so you don't use it right out of the tube, just like watercolor you actually want it to be quite liquidy. And the magic is that it still will be very, very opaque. So let's mix a little bit of blue in because this is our sky. And then we are going to mix a little bit of brown in there as well. And a little bit of yellow to give us a nice dull gray winter sky. <laughs> We just don't want it to look totally white. We certainly don't want blue. Maybe a hint more yellow. Yellow is across, well, actually orange is across from blue on the color wheel, but yellow will also help to us to kind of deaden it and dull it and make it a little muddier. And of course the brown is uh, not bad for doing that as well. So let's get lots of water in there. We have this beautiful murky winter sky color. And you can see it's just going to go right over those pencil marks because it is so opaque. So we don't have to worry about that the way we do with watercolors. And if you are doing this with watercolor, you just want to um, erase some of those extra sketch marks before you get started. Or as you've seen me do on the channel so many times with watercolor, I will work out the sketch on scrap paper and then transfer 
just what I need into my sketchbook or onto my good copy paper so that I'm not, you know, putting, there's no extra lines on that page because watercolor is such a delicate medium. And you will see the pencil, you know, through, through it. But with gouache, we're gonna get a break from all that. And I really like this dull, dull color, perfect winter sky color. You can just see that yellow in it. I love a winter yellow sky. There we go. And it was sunny when I started and now it is of course becoming so gray and so dull. And isn't that just perfect? <laughs> isn't that just perfect for, for this painting this day? If it's minus 17 outside, it could at least be sunny for us. <laughs> okay, I'm going to lighten that up with a bit of water so I can still kind of see where my um, power lines are supposed to be. I don't want to lose that because that was tricky enough to figure out. Those power lines and the road are always the part for me that I'm like, well, um... <laughs> Where does that go? Because what your brain tells you and what is actually in front of you is very different. <laughs> I'm gonna mix just a little extra mil, uh, mil oh my gosh, white into there. And just lighten up a bit right here along the horizon line. I like working with the filbert because I can get these really deliberate, purposeful brush marks and it just gives a nice painterly look. There we go. I think that looks good. Okay. I think the next thing would be to mix up a good color for the road. So what I will do is come over here. I'll use a little bit of the white. here and then I'm going to use a whole bunch of that brown and a little bit of blue a little hint of yellow and I'm just basically mixing a darker version of what we had just mixed a little more white maybe And let's paint that road. There we go. I'm still using the small number six filbert. As I said, that'll give me a nice painterly brush mark. Let's put a little bit more water in there. There we go. This is a sketchbook piece. It does not have to be perfect. Think of this as a practice painting for a larger piece. Okay, like we just wanna get kind of the main shapes in place. See what this scene really looks like on the page. And, and then maybe we'll do a, a, the real painting, the larger piece. So we are just testing out colors, Testing out the kind of where everything sits. Do we get it in the right spot? For me, it's always a challenge, but a fun challenge. Okay. Actually gonna add some lighter color right through the center. It looks like that kind of broken, back roads, winter pavement, and we'll add some more, some more color there as well as we go. But let's let that dry for now. And then what I want to do is um, the barn, we'll call it the barn. And what I need for that one is kind of a blue gray. So let's just mix over here. I'm kind of using all the same colors because that is what a winter landscape looks like to me. It's all sort of shades of green, and gray and blue and brown. It's almost colorless some days if you live 
in the north, you know what I mean. You'll go outside and when the sun is not out and there's snow on the ground, the world can look very monochromatic. It's kind of amazing. Okay, so let's paint our little gray building, gray blue steel barn over here. That could probably be a bit straighter. There we go. Mix in a bit of white because we are going to make this side a little lighter. There. Very perfectly imperfect. That's the name of the game. We are just capturing this cold, stark, colorless winter scene. It does not have to be perfect. Okay, and at this point, I think it would be a good idea to start painting some of these trees. So let's mix up a nice color for that. Come right over here and start with my Windsor Green. Mix in a whole lot of indigo and a whole lot of brown because I want a color that is somewhere between green and black or indigo and a really, really dark green and then a black brown. And you can see it's just becoming this very, very dark wintry color, but we don't actually want to use black. That looks pretty good. We'll probably mix in a little bit more water. And then while I've got a whole bunch of paint on my brush, I'm going to do some of this really dense stuff down here. Just making little brush marks. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Uh, this is quite dense above the barn and the house. Like there's not really any light showing through. So let's come over here. And, you know, just get some of that paint off our brush. And of course that horizon line right across the top. Very dense. Maybe a little bit more brown in there. These trees kind of come over the roof a little. this all very dense over here and then we can start with the fun of the less dense areas so all this stuff up here where the trees are thinning out where we actually get to shape and play a bit more but for now let's just fill you in there can be like a hint of page of white showing through a hint I think is fine totally fine there, that's looking pretty good. As I said, we're, or maybe I haven't said this enough, but I'm heading towards abstraction. I just wanna block out colors like trees, house, road. We don't need to go for a whole lot of detail. But now that we've done a lot of the blocking, let's have a bit of fun and let's start bringing some of these trees up over the sky. And that means doing a bit of detail. And I think that is going to be the fun part, so. Let's start with these guys down here, maybe over here. Just need to basically give some trees that are gonna stand above the rest like that. That's really all we're doing is making tiny little points, little mountains out of these guys. And they don't need to all be the same height. You know, you're just making like a bumpy little horizon. There, maybe one dot there. Yeah. See how just one dot can make a difference when you're working with these small little horizon details. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Have the trees come up above the barn. Some detail. They sort of go over the roof a bit. And then they go kind of in behind, but you don't see a whole lot behind that. Okay, and then we also have to make sure they go kind of over the snow down here. So that's gonna be a bit bumpy there. 
Yep. And then we get to move up into here. And I think I'm going to switch to the round brush for this. I think I would be more comfortable painting with that. So let's wet that brush, pick up this beautiful dark, dead, almost black color, a blend of Windsor green, indigo, and Van Dyke brown. And let's start with this guy that's right in the middle. And you don't have to get the trees exact to the photograph either. So it's not really actually going to matter to the person who's viewing this. You're just capturing the idea that there are multiple trees in the foreground. They do not have to be exact. Some of you will find it comforting to use the photo exactly. And I think others of us will find it probably that I would be in the second group more comforting to say like, I just need to paint some trees over here. And that's that. So if there's actually um, five trees and I only fit in four, nobody's going to know and I'm not going to tell them it or care. <laughs> you know, so there's one tree. Let's do a smaller one here. This guy kind of has a funny top. What I do is I just look for details that are going to make my painting appear more realistic. So this tree right here with the really wide, funny top, I definitely want to include him. Now, whether I make him the exact right size or put him in the exact right spot, not as important. But I want to include the shape because it's those kind of imperfections um, that we find in nature that is that are going to make our piece, our painting looks so realistic. And then there's another guy here and he's just more like regular and we're just doing some regular tree marks. Let me do a really good rundown of like how I approach a tree. So I start with that line through the middle. Of course, this is the base of the tree down here, but it's lost totally in shadow. And then I just start doing these little kind of shaky brush marks. And I find that these branches that I'm looking at in this photo, they have a little funny curve to them, kind of like a little eyelash. And then I just sort of muss it up a bit and add some more shaky brush marks, lots of negative space showing through, and then coming down towards the bottom where there's definitely not as much negative space. Everything is joined together in this dense bush. There's so many more trees that are this height, obviously, and it looks a lot sparser up here as there's fewer trees that are reaching this high height. So we've got a telephone pole there. Let's put another guy right here. So I've done the middle part, I'm going to make him a little thicker as well, which just means a whole bunch of brush marks and then some weird rando spaces doesn't need to look too perfect. Brush marks. Okay, there we go. So there's a tree. Painting landscapes is a lot of fun. There's so much room for, for abstraction and to play around and capture some details without really having to capture everything. And you can create quite an expressive painting, I think, without a whole lot of skill. I'm very new to landscapes and I've really enjoyed seeing what I can come up with. I guess what I'm saying is you can feel quite accomplished. <laughs> there we go. Let's put that guy, he's leaning a little bit. I think that just adds a touch of realism. And then these guys down here, we want there to be some taller ones and they're, they're, they're almost lost. There's not going to be much detail that far away into the painting. And then let's just move that in a bit. We're going to paint our telephone pole. And the nice thing about gouache is that we can do a light brown or gray pole and we can paint it right on top. So if you haven't left much space for the poles, like as I have not down here, that's not a problem, which I think is pretty cool. If you've been painting with watercolor, you're gonna be like, oh, that's so nice. 
I don't have to think about all the highlights right at the beginning. I can add them in at the end like a normal person. <laughs> That's just one of the tricky things about watercolor painting. Okay, and then I think, what do we want to do? Add some brush in front of the barn, add some texture to that steel of the barn. We have to add some shading on the road. What should we do first? I don't know. Let's add to the barn a little bit. I'm going to add some blue and some brown. Lots of water. A bit more blue. Blot my brush and then I'm just going to do lines like that. There. Doesn't need to be a lot. Oh, and one down there to show that this side is definitely darker, that side is lighter. And then I might just put a bit of a low light at the peak of the, the roof because the roof kind of sits over it and causes some shading there. And then I think what I'd like to do next is lighten up some areas of the road. So I'll add a bit more brown into this color here. Like everything's kind of the same color, which is nice. I just keep mixing and remixing. More white and you'll see I can just, oh, that needs a bit more white. I can do some shading on the road. The road kind of gets this frozen look to it. So that's what I'm trying to capture there. areas that are a little bit lighter. There we go. Let's go with some brown and just a hint of white and we can put in the telephone poles. add a little blue to it. Oh, that was too much blue. Gives us a bit of like a gray brown look. There we go. I'm kind of putting like a very perfectly imperfect pull there. If the paint is still wet and it smears a little bit, don't worry too much. You can come back and go over it again. And then down here, we just kind of see like the hints of telephone poles. There we go. That's pretty good. We'll add the lines in uh, as we complete the painting. We don't have to go there quite yet. And I think it would be a good time to maybe begin doing some of this low line brush, like the stuff that's surrounding the barn. Um, what else? We've got kind of a road hinting in there that comes off of, of the main road. So just a little bit of brown there. Um, there is a foam pole over on that side. We'll put him in there. So you can see I'm being very, very loose with these details. And what I want now is this kind of brownish light brownish color because I am going to start adding, you know what, that needs to be a whole lot lighter. Let's put more white in there. Start using my clean water. <laughs> and let's, uh, let's make a mess of this snowy area over here. Actually, give me a sec guys. I should actually get rid of these little X's. They are going to make it hard for me to add a proper detail. I can't cover everything here in its entirety. Okay. So yeah, there's quite a bit of like dark brown brush up here. 
and there are actually a few trees, like real scraggly things <laughs> that go like that are right in the foreground. I don't love painting uh, deciduous trees. <laughs> Let's like just leave it at that for now. And really what I want to focus on is this brush sort of peeking out from the snow. Looks like snow that is a little bit dirty or isn't quite covering the ground. I mean, that pretty much covers it. If you want to grab from that darker green, you can kind of blend, you know, at the base of that tree line. That's all I really need to do. And then I'm going to darken this up a little to give me a nice gray and come over here. Oops, I put too much blue, so I will add more brown. I like the way that the blue just kind of makes the brown, well, first of all, it darkens it and it makes it a lot less colorful, less vibrant, and that is perfect for our winter scene. And we have this brush build up right in front of the barn and it goes right over down here to the roadway and you can see little bits of it kind of all over there, down along the roadway, and then it continues up here. And we just need to give that look that the ground is not quite covered. Some of it is longer grass, like we'll go like that and do some little lines. But you also wanna leave some large white areas to show that, you know, there is big amounts of snow there as well. Like I might've gone too heavy over here, but you know what? You know what? I can always add white. That is the beauty of gouache. We can add light over dark. Yes, we can. <laughs> Big piece of eraser dust right there. I'm just gonna leave that. We'll get rid of it later. Yes, we will. Okay, so at this point, I think I need to Well, we're almost moving into finishing touches at this point. We could certainly add the yellow. So yellow on the road, yellow on the sign, which is really gonna make this whole piece pop. Um, I'm going to just add some dark bits right down here, kind of helping this snowy area blend into this tree area. And then this, this, um, tree with no leaves up here needs to be darker as well. But you do kind of see the trunk of the tree in among the, uh, the pine trees. So that part's gonna be lighter and then up top, it'll be darker. There we go. And yeah, why don't we do those those yellowy bits. I think that's going to really make this piece pop. I might add some lightness to the sky. Actually, I think that's what I'm gonna do first. So take some, I'll take some clean water and just really get a whole bunch of white on there. Kind of use this same area, but mix more white in. Even more white. I had a little too much paint on the brush and a little too much, um, like I hadn't put enough water in and you could see that the gouache actually had some body and that is what we do not want. You do not want ridges when you're painting with gouache. That would indicate that you haven't mixed in enough water. It's not like acrylics where you might want a little bit of body. You definitely don't want that with gouache.
there. I'm just like how that has added a little bit more different color to the sky and it's kind of yellowy over here and yeah. This is fun. This is definitely a challenge for me and I'm enjoying myself. Okay, let's take my pointed round brush here and pick up a little bit of that deep Naples yellow. We don't have to add anything to this. We want this sign to be a true yellow here. And you can see how wonderfully opaque the gouache is. Because it'll just go over everything. Great color. There we go. And then on the road, just going to use like a very watery Naples yellow to do that first line. And if it's really transparent, that's okay. That's okay. And then we'll do that second line. Right down at this part, it's basically just one line. You really can't differentiate. And then at the end, I'm going to wipe my brush so there's barely any paint on there. And I'm just going to do that because you really can barely see it. And then we can make this guy a little darker once we're happy with it. Cool, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. One thing I wanna do is like mix an incredibly dark color, so a whole lot of brown and blue and maybe even a hint of green in there. And I just wanna put some marks on the road because it always has dark marks and light marks on this cracked old back road pavement. And actually, if you do it while the yellow is still a bit wet, it might like kind of muss it up. And I think that helps with that area right in the foreground where there is some kind of cracking going on right over top of that yellow. There we go. Okay, we're coming up to, we just need to add some white stuff. So let's just get, grab some white I'm over here. And I'm going to paint that roof. So this is now, if it's a little bit gray, I think that's okay. I think that's good. Trying to make all my shapes perfect, but 
I could have got that corner a bit sharper. That might have been good. I can probably fix it up later. Grab a little bit of white gray and we'll put this other building in the background here. He just goes right in there. We'll make him all white and then we'll come back in with like an almost black and put some detail on that later. And then, I don't know, should we do the snow? It kind of looks good the way it is. I might put, like take a bit of white. Might take a bit of white and cover up anywhere that has like pencil marks or that just doesn't look quite right. But it doesn't really need it. I don't think that's a requirement for this piece to look done. And with watercolor, I'm so used to using the paper as the negative space, as the white. So for this, it feels kind of silly to paint the white in afterwards, but I do think it, it kind of looks nice over here. <laughs> so I guess what I'm saying is totally up to you. I think it kind of works. We're just learning. We're figuring out what we like about gouache, what we like about landscapes. At least I'm speaking for myself. Uh, gouache and landscapes are pretty new to me. So I'm just playing around and having fun. And the main thing here is I'm trying to embrace winter a little bit to see the beauty in, in this season. Um, yeah, I'm happy with the way this is looking. What I need to do is just look for those final details. Okay, so I was waiting for it to dry a little bit. I just took five minutes and got a glass of water and I just wanted some of this paint that was so, so wet to dry a little. And I, what I one thing I changed is I made the sign a little smaller. Stepping back, I was like, oh, it looks, looks pretty big. And then I also feel like these trees that you can kind of see within the, the trees I think they're a little too strong. So I'm just kind of gonna thin them out, make them almost barely there. Same thing with the telephone poles. Like I barely need them to be part of this. I can just make them a bit less noticeable. There we go. Kind of thin them out. Yeah, I think that's making for a more calm looking painting like it doesn't have you know there's such a thing I think as too many details when it just looks busy and that's really not what I wanted from this piece when I started this I almost was thinking like if you squint your eyes and look at the picture the photograph and you just sort of see this block of black evergreen the road out front and then the snow and the snow on the roof like that's what I really want to capture with this one and I think just, you know, getting rid of some of those little details is helping. There we go. I like that a lot. And yeah, that sign just did not need to be that big. And now we're pretty much at the end point. I might take like a little bit more yellow and just put it along the lines just at this front in the foreground here just to brighten it up so slightly. Um, there we go, a little bit more yellow there. And I think that's good. I, I guess the last thing, the elephant in the room, is that I need to put in these telephone lines. And so I will just take a little bit of really dark gray, like just on the very tip of my brush. And there's lots of dark sort of colors sitting on the palette here that I can use. Mm, scary. <laughs> and I'm just going to blot my brush first. Put not too much paint on there.
There we go. It was a bit wet up at the top, which is annoying. So it bled and the line became thicker than uh, what I had put down because you know you lose that precision just like with watercolor with gouache if you're painting wet onto wet it is going to bleed and blend the nice thing about gouache is I can fix that I can come in with that sky color and just like go over it and then come back in and 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 fix it up later which is exactly what I will do but for now Let's take the tape off and see what this guy really looks like. I don't want to overdo it and keep painting and painting and kind of overpaint. So yeah, time to remove some tape. That is always my favorite part of any project. Take that tape off and you have that beautiful clean white border. It looks so good. And suddenly, You've got this gorgeous piece in your sketchbook, even if it was total practice and you're not sure if you love it, seeing that nice border, I think just makes you realize like, hey, I just made a piece of art and that's really cool. And I kind of love that. I was going for like how to capture a bit of winter, what I'm seeing every day, find the beauty. So let's call this, um, I don't know, maybe back road? Is that kind of cliche? <laughs> I did, I would, took this when I was out driving um, to go meet my family for lunch. And I, Sally and I were in the car and we were taking the back roads. I'll sign my name right there. And um, yeah, we'll just call it back roads, kind of a silly name, but that's okay because it's just a piece for my sketchbook. There we go. And we'll date it too, because I think that's nice. I love this one, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out today and painting along with me and, and or just hanging out and seeing how I approach something like this. As I said, gouache is new for me. Landscapes are new. Frankly, enjoying and finding the beauty in winter totally new. <laughs> so I had some fun. If you would like to see more landscapes, please let me know in the comments and don't forget this can be done with watercolor with some modifications you could do this with acrylics you could do this with brush pens or copics you know don't feel like you have to use gouache if that's not something you have in your kit gouache is a medium that i'm a little excited about right now but you do not have to be. Okay, guys, thanks for hanging out. I will see you soon. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm posting two, three, four times a week and you don't wanna miss out.